Let's rock and roll. Thank you for that warm introduction. As you said, uh, we're going to jump right into it and talk about how we're going to improve, how you can improve your email and website security. But first, I'm going to start with a quick question. And have you or someone you know experienced an email compromise? Now, uh, before we get started talking about email compromises, uh, a lot of people experience email compromises through public domains, like public email providers like Gmail, Yahoo, things like that. Uh, some quick facts. Recently, this year, just as of May 2022, actually, um, Gmail, users regarding Gmail, cyber attackers, uh, they have been allowed uh, because of the security controls and the security on the spam uh, filters of Gmail uh, to impersonate legitimate companies, um, all different kinds of companies, um, making the malicious emails that they're sen sending seem authentic and making it a lot harder for users to uh, pick out those uh, those hacks or those actual attacks. And all right, we're getting some answers coming in. But uh, what is crazy about this is that because of Gmail's filters, um, they're allowing over 4.6 million emails to be sent out in 24 hours span. And so you're probably seeing a lot of these uh, malicious emails looking like authentic uh, organizations, legitimate companies, and uh, even us here at uh, Iron Tech Security, we've been seeing the exact same thing. And so uh, I see that about 20% of people here today have actually experienced an email compromise, 60% um, showing uh, that someone that they know have experienced an email compromise. And so we're going to talk about a lot of the vulnerabilities regarding emails and uh, those sources and how that act happens and different ways that it happens. But uh, start it off, if you're using public emails such as Gmail, Yahoo, uh, there's been lots of cyber attacks and there's been lots of compromises within those. And today we're going to discuss how to basically make sure you don't become one of those statistics or a victim to one of those cyber attacks regarding emails. So first, email vulnerabilities. You hear all types of different, different things regarding email compromises, but the main thing you may have heard is uh, what is a, a BEC or a business email compromise. So business email compromises uh, are one of the leading cyber attacks happening at the moment, just because of the ease and the pure conversions that they're getting. And we'll jump into numbers here in a little bit, but what a business email compromise compromise is it's a type of email uh, cyber attack or cyber crime in which a cyber attacker targets a business or a person or a specific employee from that organization and either compromises their email um, by having their passwords or login credentials or acting like a malicious user uh, regarding another email and then, of course, obtaining that, uh, compromising that email from there. So why is this such a big thing? Why have we been seeing an increase in business email compromises? Well, a couple of years ago, a thing called COVID happened and allow uh, or actually forced a lot of us to work from home and rely on different forms of communication instead of face-to-face -face or meeting in the office. We had to rely on email. We had to rely on um, Zoom meetings, virtual meetings. And I ran across this story uh, not too long ago, and it's really, really blew my mind. And so one way that uh, business email compromises are happening and cyber attacks are happening, happening is by um, a cyber attacker uh, acting like a, a employee or a CEO, CFO, a top executive, because they've been able to compromise that person's email via their credentials. And from there, they will request to actually uh, have another employee or maybe someone in finances or something uh, to participate in a Zoom meeting or a virtual meeting. So they hop on the meeting. Uh, the employee actually thinks it is the CEO. So when they hop on, of course, instead of having the video working, there's just a still picture, um, such as uh, you see often people don't wanna have the video cameras on, cameras on so they just put a video, uh, a quick picture of them. And then it looks real, it looks authentic. And then from that, they may uh, say their audio is not working or 
deep fake the audio where it kind of where it seems like it's messing up. Uh, so they just have to chat uh, via chat box or email. And then, of course, they instruct that employee to initiate a wire transfer or transfer funds of money that looks completely authentic. But because of the business email compromise, there's no way for that employee to know exactly what's going on. And so that's one crazy uh, example of that ha example that's happening every day that no one would think about, but lots of people are being affected by it. So when we talk about business email compromises, uh, there's comes down to about five types. We just talked about a uh, CEO fraud, but it's where that was an extreme example regarding uh, virtual meetings, but it happens all the time where a cyber attacker will um, kind of position themselves as that CEO or as that executive and email possibly the finance department requesting funds to be transferred to an account that looks legitimate, but is actually um, controlled by that cyber attacker. Uh, we're seeing account compromises uh, where I mentioned where a, a full employee's email account has been compromised because of maybe loose uh, passwords or you may be reusing passwords. And so very easy uh, to obtain those passwords, especially on the, uh, the dark web. We'll talk a little bit about that uh, throughout the webinar. But um, one, if your password management, if your passwords aren't uh, safe and secure and long 15 to 20 plus digit passwords, it's very, very common to see an email compromise because of that. Where then they're exactly acting as that user as that user of the uh, email and requesting funds, uh, requesting information from your employees, uh, colleagues, family members, uh, that looks legitimate, but of course it's being done by a cyber attacker. Of course, we're also seeing uh, false invoice uh, schemes. Uh, cyber attacker can act as a supplier to, uh, to an organization requesting funds, of course, it's a fraudulent account. It's a fake account that's controlled by that cyber attacker. The funds are transferred and there's no way of getting it back. Uh, recently, I've personally have seen uh, attorney impersonations where you'll get an email. It may look like it's from a legitimate uh, legal representative. Usually they target uh, lower level employees asking uh, for information or uh, even financial transactions where uh, a lower level employee wouldn't question the, uh, that, that uh, legal person or that attorney or that basically that cyber attacker acting as that attorney wouldn't question that because they have no reason to. Another example and a type of business email compromise is uh, data theft where this often is focused towards HR employees where they are impersonating, once again, maybe someone higher up in the company, but um, their objective is to gain sensitive information on maybe another CEO, executive, or overall employees within that organization. Now, uh, a specific example that actually happened to a client of ours regarding business email compromise. Uh, originally, we had, he was with, uh, he uses at and uh, email. It's a public domain, a shared server. We'll talk about that going forward. But he relied on at and and we advised him in the beginning to switch over to our private email hosted server. And so, of course, he used us. He'd have a lot of the security tools in place. And what happened from him declining uh, to use our safe, secure email hosting service, he ran into a situation where he had invoiced a client of his uh, $14,000. Sent that to him via email, but what he did not know was that he was currently going through a business email compromise and that the cyber attacker, attacker actually sent the same email to his client, same invoice and everything, but he simply just changed the bank account information. From that, uh, the client sent over the $14,000 to the wrong person, to the cyber attacker. And from there, of course, uh, our client was out 14 grand is a big ordeal. But from that, of course, he learned that he should have been on the private email server provided by us, safe and secure. secure. He, of course, switched over to make sure this doesn't happen again. But all in all, uh, 
if he simply wasn't using that public server, if he wasn't on Gmail, Yahoo, or at t Net, uh, he wouldn't have worried about that simple, it seems very simple, that simple problem of the business email compromise where now he's out 14 grand. A $20 fix can avoid a $14,000 uh, problem. And he was just a one-person law firm. And so it happens every day, every day. And it's not a sniper attack. It happens to any and everyone. Now, uh, email vulnerabilities, those aren't the only things that you have to worry about, uh, but they're also correlated to uh, website vulnerabilities. And Tom, uh, he's going to talk about a couple of the most common uh, website vulnerabilities and website threats that uh, we're seeing every day as information security team, as information security specialist, but um, also what you're seeing every day and uh, dealing with every day. Yeah, so, uh, you know, we, t we talk a little bit about make sure you get your website professionally hosted, professionally managed, professionally protected by professionals, InfoSec <laughs> professionals. And the, the, the reason for that is there's nothing special about a web server. It is a computer that has software on it. It's got an operating system, and it's probably not Windows, and I would question anyone putting a website on a Windows server, but it's what's known as a LAMP, uh, Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. You don't need to know what all that is, but it's pieces of software, just like on your own computer. The vast majority of websites used by everyone from the New York Times to us and your business is probably built on a WordPress platform. It's just another piece of software that drives the whole website. They have to be patched. They have security updates. They can be penetrated. So you've got to stay up to, up to date on all of those various things, just like you do on any other server, on your laptop, on your workstation, Windows, Mac, whatever. You've got to put these patches on there. And it's so easy for business owners to just say, where can I get it the cheapest? And I'm done with my website designer. I don't need to do anything else. And three to five years later, when they realize that their site is getting out of date, and this doesn't matter if you're putting new blog posts on. I'm talking about the fundamental software components on the website. Three, their, their patches are getting older and older. There's plenty of vulnerabilities over all sorts of those different pieces of software. And the site gets breached. And once a hacker gets into a website, they can deliver payloads to anyone visiting your site, and they don't even know it. It doesn't pop up. Do you want to download this from this site? Unless you've got some really good security, which is what I normally talk about on your, your endpoint, right? Your laptop or your desktop. <clears throat> so th those things, websites have to be kept up. I think I saw a stat where it was... Uh, an increase of 20 to 30 percent mm -hmm. in the last year over website attacks, you know, exploiting the vulnerabilities on the websites. Another thing you get with professionally managed websites is protection from DDoS attacks. It's a denial of service. You know, that's when you, you know, the ones that hit CNN are, um, you know, that's the ones everyone hears about. But I think that we've been hit with a DDoS attack, but our site didn't go down because it was being professionally managed. There is something that it's called a CDN. Yes, another <laughs> acronym. But basically, it's a way to distribute your site, multiple, multiple copies out on the Internet, the, the World Wide Web, you know, out on the cloud. And if one server goes down, it, it doesn't matter. It's, it's just it's high availability. But we were seeing an increase on distributed denial of service attacks. That's where people intentionally crash your site. Uh, for the larger companies, they do it to hold them hostage and ransom and things. like. There's a lot of different reasons why you want to do that. Hacktivists do that a lot, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, these activists that have, uh, they got a bone to pick with who, whoever they're, you know, Greenpeace shutting down Exxon's website, right? That kind of thing. Uh, but if you get it professionally managed, all of those things will be put in place. And the best management of web hosting will automatically patch your WordPress. You know, they, they're going to take care of that server. 
but you know you have really good hosting if your WordPress components are getting patched as well. So don't forget about that. This is something that I, I think this is the first time where I've really gone in depth on this. Yeah. Kevin. Yeah. So no, it's don't extremely, forget about your website. It's extremely important in uh, this next uh, visual that we have here actually, of course, shows the increase in the amount of people uh, being affected. Now, uh, this might be a little bit small, but I'll uh, go ahead and point out the um, extreme, the important pieces. So on the left, it's the number of victims counted. It's kind of the bluish gray, but uh, we're talking about business email compromises and you'll see uh, kind of towards the middle, it says uh, business email compromises. The number of victims is uh, 19,900, close to 20,000 people. And this is just a uh, recorded. This is the FBI internet crime report of uh, 2021 to be exact. And so business email compromises um, shows 20,000 people um, were a victim of business email compromise, that so type of cyber attack. But on the right, you'll see it's the, the red box and that shows the actual uh, dollar amount lost from those affected victims. So business email compromised, 20,000 were affected with a total loss of over $2 billion in 2021. Devin, what, what was the amount of dollars off of just one email on uh, that, uh, that attorney that had his email compromised? 14,000. Right. So what happened was is the criminal intercepted that email and just changed the routing number and the bank account number. He Simple received and easy. it. He pro the criminal probably used the original email and manipulated it because mm -hmm. he's got full access to the email server. Yes, just as, just as the the attorney did. Mm -hmm. He intercepted the invoice. It's not a fake invoice. It's it's the it's just the account number and the routing number that was edited. And he pays yeah. it. And, Unreal. And, he had no uh, reason to question. It looked legitimate. Right, right. Now, I would argue that that's not his fault. I would argue, and, and I think the attorney would probably agree, because then he got off uh, Yahoo or AOL or Gmail, mm -hmm. whatever, whatever public email uh, he was using. service he was using. And he, and he called us and said, well, let's get this fixed. I need to, I need to get grown-up email. You know, you yes. know, and then that goes back to thinking about your business and your brand and, and all of that. You, it's Gmail – you know, for the vast majority of people in a business, you, using a Gmail account, I mean, that's better than an AOL or a Yahoo. Yahoo gets breached all the time, and I think Dan oh, yeah. is going to talk a little bit about that. Yeah, Yahoo, back in uh, 2016, they actually reported, Yahoo, this came from Yahoo themselves, um, they reported that 500 million users, uh, their emails were compromised, and that was revealing their uh, their personal information, their first, last name, uh, email addresses, passwords, um, bank information, all kinds of information regarding their emails. Over 500 million users were affected. And people still are using Yahoo today, knowing yeah. that. And, and I want to make another point about this. And, and I'd love to do a deeper dive with you, Davin, sometime mm -hmm. on about privacy and security go hand in hand. Yes. Anytime you're using a free service, from whoever the vendor may be, whether it's Google, AOL, Yahoo, on and on and on, their business model is selling you. Mm -hmm. That's why you get it for free. And that means it's, it's likely that security is also pushed down the list. Yes. Because they're in the business of selling your personal data. Yeah. And... It, I, it just, I saw a list, a mailing list of one of ours the other day, and I was absolutely stunned on some of these companies that have 20, 30 people that work there and they're using a Yahoo account. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's, that's a ticking time bomb. And yeah. so it, there, I know there's some of you on here that, that are using those types of account, but you're, it's just a matter of time before it gets breached, perhaps through no fault of your own. Yeah. It's crazy that you mentioned a lot of those free services. A report came out today, and, and then we'll move on. We'll, we'll get to show. We'll talk about how you actually protect your email and now how you actually protect your website. But uh, briefly, before we move on, an article came out today, and Gmail is actually going to um, start charging for you to use uh, G Suite, their business services, those um, business Gmail accounts. They're actually going to start uh, charging by the end of this month. 
and if you don't sign up or you don't pay uh, by August, um, those accounts will be suspended. Yeah. And so, uh, no, but there's, but now the personal emails, the personal Gmail accounts, yeah, those should uh, be. They're going to continue to mine you <laughs> to make money off of you. That's yes. the, that's their the, the business. They're just shifting the business grade, the G Suite or whatever it's called, mm -hmm. workspaces. I think something like that. Uh, yeah, they're the ones where you actually put your. Do it looks like it's your domain, but it's hosted by Google. That's mm -hmm. going to a paid model. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just so. Worry, if you're going to have to pay for it, why not? Why not? I've do done it by right? security yeah. specialists, by actual specialists. Yes. But, yes. Uh, next visual we have here. This is a quick graph, and this is showing the actual um, number of uh, de de denial of service attacks that Tom was speaking about earlier on websites, and the um, projected scale that the attacks are um, projected to be. So, of course, 2021. 12 million uh, were expected to increase over 2 million uh, in attacks um, just next year. And so um, DDoS uh, or denial of service attacks are becoming a lot more popular as are business email compromises as well. Now, of course, what you've been waiting for, I know uh, the 30 minute mark is coming up uh, here soon, but overall, you have all of this information. You understand the vulnerabilities. Uh, you understand the risk. Well, what do you do about it? How do you improve your security? Well, there's multiple options, but the main one and one of the most essential that you can do immediately is private hosting. Um, there's lots of positives regarding uh, private hosting, using your information security team to host, manage, and secure your email, your website, uh, Tom, I know you were talking about, um, I don't even think you mentioned it yet, DNS uh, filtering and how that is extremely important um, regarding your uh, information security team and uh, private hosting as well. Do you want me to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I'll talk briefly on private hosting and DNS, and then I'll uh, finish the rest. Okay. Uh, so there's a new scam going around right now, and it looks like it's coming from a professional – uh, security specialist, like an independent, and he goes, I just want to get a bounty. I want to point out the flaws in your system. And it goes through all these DNS records. It looks like a bunch of gibberish, and, you know, and, and it, it really it really looks like a legitimate bounty hunter. There, there's people that go out and look for bugs, and then they give them to the vendor, and the vendor pays them if they've got a published bounty program, <laughs> right? And uh, so it totally comes in. We, I've gotten several of them. And if you carefully look through their recommended changes, if you make these DNS, and DNS is what runs the entire Internet. That's how, you, that's how when you, you know, the CNN.com is at a string of numbers. But the DNS is what translates CNN.com to a numbered street address. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's it just says CNN.com equals one three one dot one two two dot dot blah, blah, blah. Right. So if we had changed to his recommended security settings, it would have allowed Gmail. To send out of our domain with all the correct other identifiers that identify it as being legitimate. In other words, all he had to do was send it from a Gmail account and mm -hmm. to all of the spam filters and all of the security defenses that are put in place to stop illegitimate email, it would have gone right past him. And that's why DNS is important. So the, the, the thing to learn from that is, is don't let anyone tinker with your DNS. Yeah. That's a whole different deeper dive, and we can go into mm -hmm. it sometime, but I think everybody's eyes would roll back in their head. Yeah. Uh, just don't let anyone tinker with your DNS that don't know what they're doing. Yeah. And what was the – oh, the private hosting. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so private hosting is actually – private email hosting. Specifically. Uh, you can get a shared enterprise-grade email service for about the same price or arguably less – than what you would pay Google for their business class email. And you get it away from Google, right? 
Uh, and, but if you're larger, larger organizations, they do what's known as uh, exchange servers, and they'll either have them in their big corporate data center or they'll put them up in the cloud, which is where a VPS comes in. Now, in our case, it, whichever way you go, and we do both, we have a shared exchange server, but nobody can see each other's emails unless you're mm -hmm. with that company. But then we also have exclusive dedicated email servers for, you know, people that handle sensitive data like law firms, accounting, uh, on and on and on. Et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, yeah. So that, that, that's something that you really want to look into. There's not a lot of providers out there mm -hmm. that provide truly private enterprise-grade email, and all of them you have to pay for. If you yeah. don't have to pay for it, that's not secure, and it's not enterprise-grade. Yeah. And those vulnerabilities we talked about uh, when we talked about the patching and uh, the high security, that's what you get from using an information security team like Iron Tech Security. That's what you get. Uh, that's what you should expect when you get the private hosting. We know for a fact that the emails, the security is being monitored. The patches are being done routinely and immediately. Uh, but also you get, of course, higher performance. And you can customize it to, to fit your exact business needs. Now, um, another extremely, extremely important, important uh, security control that you can put in place to uh, secure your email, but also overall your organization and how you interact with the emails is continuous cybersecurity training. A lot of people have once a year, an hour long training that is a lot of information at once and usually goes in one, out, one ear and out the other. Well, uh, with our specific continuous security training, once a month takes about five minutes, short videos, a few questions, but it gets it down to the point and updates you on the important information you need to know. But what I like about it is that uh, we actually send out simulated phishing emails. Uh, we've been talking about uh, cyber attackers um, sending out uh, malicious emails, acting, impersonating others. Well, uh, we have a training tool that you'll get an email, could say like from Facebook or uh, from Google, something like that, change your, to ask you to change your password. Well, if you fall for it and you click on it, what it will say is, oh, you've been fished by Iron Tech Security. This is how we got you. This is what to look out for. I should give you a short training on overall phishing uh, emails, how to avoid them. Uh, and instead of your employee clicking or you clicking on an email that tends to be, that happens to be malicious, and now your company's being held for ransom and you're out $100,000, now you can go through this training uh, practice, this uh, training exercise that if you do mess up, now you can learn from it in a safe environment extremely important and i myself i've fallen for it and so i don't think anybody here in the office is 100 percent, except maybe one except maybe one. There, there but, uh, one there's one i'm not it, i'm not 100 yeah. it can fool the best i'm telling you it can absolutely yes. fool the best yes but very very good training exercise that i recommend for everyone and it's once again inexpensive uh, another extremely and probably the most uh important is an information security team uh, if you have information security team they will take care of all of this. We will take care of all of this. Um, all of our clients who come on, if they're, if they're using Gmail, Yahoo, or uh, AT&T, AOL, something like that, um, for like the example before, we highly, highly recommend that they use a private, private hosted email because of the vulnerabilities in the cyber attacks that we've been talking about here today. But they also, you, you can expect from your information security team that they have the proper security controls in place to one, uh, stop those attacks, stop those business email compromises, um, take care of the managing and the patching of that, uh, that email server. And overall, uh, take the, the stress off your shoulders of possibly thinking that the business that you've been working to build for the past five to 10 years, 15 plus years uh, could be shut down just by an employee of yours clicking on an email. Now, of course, if I was specifically a business owner, of course, that would stress me out and I would be worried about that every day. And so by having the information security team uh, in your back part, pocket, hand in hand, uh, those worries can go away. 
Yeah, and I, I want to just take a moment here. I know we're going over a little bit, but um, no, you're when you, I, I want everybody, you know, we often come across, and we have a, a, a habit of doing this as well. It's like, how big, how big of a company do I need to be before I really have to worry about this stuff? And most people have a tendency to think, how many employees I got? Do I have one? Do I have two? Do I have five? Do I have ten? And that's important because the number of the more people you have, the more likely you're going to be attacked because mm-hmm. over ninety percent of the breaches require an insider, yep, to make it happen. Okay, but another thing that you've simply got to factor in in your risk analysis is what's your revenue, and what does that mean to your livelihood or to your wealth, to your happiness? You know, worth is different things to different people. It's not about money always. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we have clients that have 20 people in the company, but they're an international company. They, they, it's a, one of them is a very unique business. They invented a whole category of stuff, Uh, but they're a relatively small company. And then we've got others that have 200 employees that do $10 million a year, but you've got to factor in, the, the revenue that you're trying mm-hmm. to protect and, and you've got to factor in the employee's livelihood. So you, you've got to think about all stakeholders when you're doing a risk analysis and how serious you need to be about security. Yeah. And if I had to point to one thing that, it, it, there's two things <laughs> that prevent companies from implementing security. The other one is it won't happen to me or I hope it doesn't happen to me. And that's not a strategy. That means you're not being a leader. Mm -hmm. But the other is, is all the stakeholders that's relying on you, even if it's just you. Yeah. Okay. And email is, is usually a vulnerability that's uh, overlooked or your website is usually something that uh, is overlooked, but clearly we saw the stats today. Um, It's not something to be overlooked anymore. It's something serious that has to be addressed. Now, we're a little bit over the 30 minute mark. Please, if you do have any questions, uh, feel free to put those in the question box or uh, the chat box, but uh, we want to speak with you. If you have questions regarding cybersecurity, if you have questions on how to protect your organization, or if you simply don't know where to start, what do I do? You can uh, check out the meeting uh, link. It is it is in the chat box now. You can click on that and schedule a short 30-minute meeting. You can also reach out to us at sales at irontechsecurity.com but also feel free to call at the number below. But the main thing is, and we do have a special going on right now. It's very exclusive, but if you're interested and you don't know where to start, you don't know uh, what to do, we're offering free security and risk assessments. And that is a, uh, a brief process that allows you to understand overall where your vulnerabilities are, where your gaps are. It's the perfect starting point to securing your organization. Because the worst thing you do is just start throwing security tools um, at your business and hoping something, it, hoping it's fixed. Uh, the proper and professional approach is to first identify those vulnerabilities and then uh, put the proper security controls in place to fill those gaps. Um, that's the most efficient way. That's the most effective way. And we're here, we're here to help with that. Yeah. And that, that's absolutely true. Uh, and, and, and I don't want to get into another deeper dive since <laughs> we're already over time here and, and we're going to do this one day, one day, yeah. but I, I, I want to stress, you don't, you don't have to go to us. You need to go mm-hmm. to a security specialist, not an it person. Yeah. And we often work with it professionals. Yeah. We, I, they make us better. We make them better, but that that's protecting your doing it the right way is really not their objective. Their mission is to just make things work operations, uh, increase productivity. It's an operations role. Mm-hmm. Cybersecurity defense is a strategic role. It's a management and a leadership decision. And it has, it's a cost of doing business these days. And you're only going to get what you truly need or for the people that really eat, drink, and sleep it. Yes. But keep up to date with who, what's the latest Russian uh, division that's doing uh, attack on the critical infrastructure of the United States. 
because they do it all the time. They're wargaming all the time. I see yeah. the threat alerts. Yeah. You, you, these don't hit CNN. <laughs> you know, it happens all day, every day, 24 yes. 7, 365. So, also, uh, like I said, this is a monthly recurring deeper dive series. So, uh, next month, uh, last Thursday of the month, we will be talking on another topic regarding cybersecurity, cybersecurity and overall how to protect your business. Uh, if you got a notebook, uh, write these links down, write those emails down. If you think of a question or uh, don't have time at the moment, but want to reach back out in the next couple of weeks, for free to reach out, schedule a meeting. We are always open to talk to you. And uh, remember, we're he, we are here as a resource to help protect organizations and uh, individuals such as yourself. Now, comments, questions, critiques, yes. and suggestions for topics. Use that email yes. right there. Perfect. Well, there's not any more questions. We'll give you a, another minute to put those in there if you have any. But if not, you have my email. You have our phone number. Please feel free to reach out. But overall, we will see you next month. Uh, talk a little bit more. Dive a little bit deeper in cybersecurity. I hope you all enjoyed uh, yourself here today and enjoy the rest of your Thursday afternoon. Thanks for joining everybody.